Hey folks, if you're new to woodworking, then you're going to want to check out this video. It's my top 10 woodworking tools under $100. Now, if you're an experienced woodworker, why don't you watch the video anyways and compare your list to mine and leave your comments below. Oh yeah, make sure you stick around to the very end because there's a special offer from McFeely's just for you viewers. Okay, now let's get started. Hello folks, now before I get into my top 10 list, I want to remind you about the newsletter. The first issue is coming out February 5th. Now the second issue is coming out March 5th and I'm going to tell you about some of the things you can expect to see in that second issue during the course of this video. If you'd like to get signed up for the newsletter that's absolutely free, click on the link in the description below. Okay. So if you saw my video a couple of weeks ago, the top 10 essential woodworking tools, then you know that it takes a little bit of time to acquire those as well as money. And if you're new to woodworking, you probably want to get started right away. So this is a list to help you do that. Keep in mind, it is not going to by any means give you the same performance and quality that those higher priced tools will, but this will definitely help you get the job done. Now, before I show you my tools, I want to tell you that my tools have been in the shop for quite a long time, and I am in no way endorsing any brand or manufacturer, but merely the type of tool that it is. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at number 10. 10. The Framing Square. Now, if you're going to do any kind of building, you're definitely going to want a framing square. The framing square allows us, after we've made our cut, to check to see if we have a true 90 degrees. Also, too, with the framing square, it allows me to be able to draw lines going across it to make those cuts. Now, the framing square that I like best, opposed to these, happens to be this 12 inch speed square. The reason I like the speed square better is the speed square has this fence on it. So it easily will register with the edge of the board allowing me to make my lines. Where with the framing square I have to keep to this end dip down a little bit below the board and for me it just seems a little bit harder to, um, for speed, maneuver. The other thing nice about the speed square, it allows me to make my lines for doing 45 degrees. Also too, there's a scale on here. So it goes in uh, one degree increments. So what I can do is, if, for example, this is the 10 degree increment. If I bring this 10 degrees, to the edge of the board, pivoting here at the top, I can draw this line going across, and that is a 10 degree angle. So definitely, a framing square or a 12 inch speed square is key for your shop. Nine. If you're not into all the physical work that comes along with a traditional hand plane, then definitely the electric hand plane is for you. The electric hand plane can quickly square up the edges on your boards or it can completely flatten a very large worktop. In fact, I flattened this whole bench top with just this hand plane here. And that's why this comes in at number nine on my must-have tools. Eight. Go into any professional woodworker shop and you're definitely going to find a bandsaw. But if you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw will do a great job too. In fact, the jigsaw in many cases can get into spots and locations that a big bandsaw can't. The jigsaw can cut odd shapes, curves, and even circles. That's why the jigsaw is a definite must-have for your shop. Seven. Okay, so this next tool isn't exactly a tool, it's more of a jig. 
but if you walk into just about anybody's workshop, you're definitely going to find this there. And that is the Craig Pocket Hole Jig. Now, Craig offers various different styles of this. Anything from something very basic up to a machine that can do production work. This one falls right in the middle. What this allows me to do is I can place my workpiece in here and clamp it and then with a special drill bit it will drill through on an angle. It gives me the clearance hole and a special angled countersunk hole for a screw to go through and fasten my work pieces together. It's fast and strong and it works great on a lot of projects that you're doing. Six. Next is the router. Now without a doubt the router I use fairly often in my shop. In fact I think I have nine of them. But if you've never used a router before the large ones like this well, they can be a little intimidating because they have quite a bit of torque and power to it. So for your first router, I suggest getting one of these smaller ones. They're a lot easier to control. Now a router of this size, it works best on boards that are medium to large size. It's too dangerous to use on a small piece of wood such as this. However, if you take one of these routers and you turn it upside down and mount it into a fixture, you now have a router table. And with the fence on here, I can now safely push small pieces through being able to route a profile onto my workpiece. Now for the newsletter subscribers in the March issue, I will have a PDF in there that will show you step by step how to build this here router table so that you can have one for your shop. And if you need it, well the plans will also be there available. So make sure you sign up and subscribe to that newsletter in that link below. Five. No matter what project you're working on, you're going to have to sand it if you want it to look good. Now, you could do it by hand, but I truly don't recommend it. Otherwise, you're going to get out of woodworking real fast. And so an electric sander is another essential tool to have. Now, there's several out there. And the probably one that comes in at a lower price point is what they call a palm sander. Essentially, it's square and it moves back and forth. But I like to upgrade to the orbital sander, which you can see is round. Now what happens with the palm sander is, as this moves back and forth, it oddly creates a twirling circle here in the middle. And the grit from the sandpaper will fall off and get into that circle. So when you're done sanding with it, you'll see these little, what I call pigtail marks left behind from the grit. However, using an orbital sander, because of the centrifugal motion of it going around, it tends to throw those little pieces of grit away, reducing the problems that you typically get with the palm sander, making a nicer finish. Four. Without a doubt, my miter saw is something that I use all the time in the shop. But, believe it or not, so is my miter saw box. This allows me to make cuts up to 45 degrees either direction and it's great for medium to small size pieces. In fact, I cut all my small pieces on here because I feel it's safer than on that big miter saw. Now granted, this is an older model and I believe I picked this up from an Amish friend on a job site. You can still find these at garage sales and such, but you can also buy a new version of a miter saw box and it still fits within our price point of under $100. Three. The impact driver. Now not to be mistaken for a drill, the drill has a continuous spinning action to it. This acts like a little jackhammer as it goes along and it's great for especially if you have to put screws in a tight place. It gives you that extra torque and power that you need. However, 
well, I said, don't mistake this for a drill. Please don't put bits in it, such as a paddle bit, to make a hole. I've been on job sites where they've gone through with this and hit like a knot into a board and it will break this paddle bit off and send it flying like shrapnel. So use the impact driver for your screws only and for drilling your holes, well, use a drill. Two. And speaking of drill, that comes in number two on our list. Now, I would actually suggest that you have both a cordless and a corded drill in your shop. The cordless is definitely convenient for getting it around quickly in any position where you have to. But if you're going to be drilling a lot of holes or you're going to be drilling big holes, you definitely want to go with a corded drill. It'll be faster because you won't always be charging those batteries and it'll just be steady and consistent for you all the way through the project. Now, it doesn't matter if you're buying a cordless or a corded drill, I also encourage you to get a chuck that is in half inch size, not 3 8 Every once in a while, you're going to need a drill bit and it's going to be at a larger shank here. And if you have just the 3 8 you're not going to be able to get it to fit and you'll be wishing that you bought that half inch chuck. One. No question, the number one most used tool for me in a budget workshop is the circular saw. This can do so many things. It can rip, it can cross cut, it can notch, I can make half laps, dados, grooves, rabbits. This machine can do so many things for me. And that's why I'm making this my number one pick for the budget workshop. Now, in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to really maximize the use of your circular saw. I'm going to show you how to make some homemade jigs for it, as well as purchase some jigs that are incredibly reasonably priced that will make this thing perform at its best. And there you are, my 10 best woodworking tools that you need for your shop under 100 bucks. Now I have to admit, it was really hard to limit that list to just 10. And so I had some runners up or some honorable mentions, if you will. So I decided to film a video on those, but I'm going to show that only for the subscribers at the newsletter. And that video will be coming out February 5th. So just another reason for you to subscribe to the newsletter. So I did say at the beginning of this video that there was going to be something special in it for you. And McFeely's is giving you 10% off their ProMaster screws. All you have to use is that coupon code below in the description. However, the sale does run out March 1st. So if you're going to want to stock up some supplies, now is the time to do it. And speaking of March, in March's newsletter, I'm going to be reviewing a tool. And it's a tool that you should probably want for your shop. It comes in under $40, and you'll be able to read my comparison test in it. However, McFeely's is being so generous to just the newsletter subscribers that they are going to offer that tool at 30% off. That's an amazing savings. And again, it's for a limited time or while supplies last. So check that out in the March 5th edition of the newsletter. Okay, as always, I thank you for watching. My whole purpose is to make you a better woodworker. And of course, there's no other better way to celebrate than to keep on dancing. <laughs>